I'm Gwyneth Gall, I'm the Director of Development for the Silicon Valley Community Foundation. Uh, joined with me here, we've got Sabrina Walensky, who's going to also be uh, making some remarks and talking a little bit about last year's success and case studies. I'm also joined by my colleague Lisa Barr in the back, and you saw Lakshmi when you came in. She's downstairs. She'll be up shortly. So the entire SV Gives team is, is here and at your disposal. Um, we also have our very famous Jessica Weir, um, who is the uh, philanthropy and civic engagement manager for Microsoft and um, overall an awesome person and a super partner. Um, and so I definitely want to say thank you to Microsoft for being our lead sponsors this year. Again, they're not just sponsors, but really true partners in all of this, and it's been really exciting to work with them. Um, and they donated this amazing space for our training, so thank you uh, for that as well. Um, so what we're going to do today is talk a little bit about kind of engaging donors, learning about how to engage corporate donors, thinking through the prize and bonus structure um, and what that looked like last year, maybe going over a few case studies, some lessons learned, um, and of course answering questions. So feel free to stop and ask questions throughout, after, whenever you see fit, and uh, we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, so like I said, that's our, our title for the day of the training session. Um, hopefully you'll, you'll gain some uh, exciting knowledge from it. And um, our agenda, so we're going to talk um, kind of out of the gates. Jessica's going to make some feedback and, and comments on leveraging corporate support, kind of what corporate sponsors are thinking about when they uh, support nonprofits, um, how best to approach them, and, and so forth, um, and what, what motivates them. So uh, things that you should really be thinking about when you're trying to engage a corporate donor. Uh, again, talking about prize opportunities, creating an action plan, so on the day of, leading up to the day, what are some tools and techniques that you can use um, to engage your donors, your existing donor base, as well as a new donor base. Um, going through some case studies, and then again, questions. So, sound like a good plan for today? Yeah, yeah? awesome. Show of hands, how many um, are new to SV Gives this year? Wow, fantastic. Do we have anyone in the room that has not yet registered? Everyone in the room is registered for SV Gives. Wow, fantastic. That's great news. Um, as of this week, we have just over 300 nonprofits that have registered. Um, that's within a week of registration being open. So very exciting and glad to hear everyone here is participating. So welcome. Thanks so much for coming out on a Monday morning. Um, so what I want to do is just take a couple of minutes uh, I've been managing Microsoft's philanthropy in Silicon Valley for the last three years, and I want to, since you were so nice to come out here on Monday morning, I want to just kind of lift up the covers a little bit and show you what we're thinking about when we think about partnering with nonprofits. Show you our thinking on our end so you can think about how to plug into it from your side. So, I'll, and first, I'll just start with talking about why Microsoft supports SV Gives and why I, I've been engaged with the program since the very beginning. I love it. I was so excited to see the successes of last year, and I'm really excited to see what happens this year. So here are some of the things that make me excited and Microsoft excited about Silicon Valley Gives. Local giving. I know as a local nonprofit in Silicon Valley, there's sometimes some frustration about where all the money in the valley goes. The concept of community has gotten larger and broader in the world, um, and everyone thinks about their local community differently. At the same time, you guys are doing hard work on the ground every day here in Silicon Valley where there are so many issues of inequality and there's so much need. And so thank you for that work. We know it's important to give locally. Um, a lot of the corporate CSR, corporate social responsibility people you'll be talking to are sometimes in charge of a portfolio where they have to be think about giving in China and across the country and in Europe and then also here locally. So while you were focused in your work, for most of you, your work is really focused locally, the corporate giving officers you're working with might be thinking more broadly and only have so much of their time or energy or budget that they can dedicate to local giving. So just keep that in mind. We all know local giving is important. We all drive around and are part of this community and, see, and live and work and hopefully thrive here. But I just wanted to kind of let you, let you in on that framework. Um, secondly, one of the things I really love about Silicon Valley Gives is that I want you not to rely on me as a corporate donor. I'm super unreliable as a corporate donor. I change my focus whenever the CEO decides. Um, I barely give year over year funding. I, I'm random. I am terrible for you. You should not rely on me. I want you to build a strong, diverse donor base so that you can weather the storms when a corporation changes their mind about their focus. 
I want you to tap into the individual wealth in this valley, because when we talk about the money in this valley, it has not, we're not hiding it in a closet down the hall here, and neither is Google or Twitter or any of our other tech companies. That money is accruing, for the large part, in, into the hands of a relatively small number of people. Um, so I want you to have great individual donors on your roles that you can rely on year over year that will give you unrestricted gifts, that will give you the operational support that you need, that I want you to have that, I want you to have foundational giving, I want you to have corporate giving, I want you to have a full and diverse portfolio. And I think SV Gives helps you move in that direction. And then trainings like this are important too, whether you're learning how to build um, a social media strategy or thinking differently about your development strategy, that capacity building is also a really important part of this entire event. Uh, Microsoft and every other tech company in this region, all of the engineers and the buildings around us are constantly pushed to innovate, right? That's not news to anybody. The same thing happens to me, though, uh, on the CSR side. I have to be innovative, too. I can't make the same grants every year when I'm in a company that's full of innovation and disruption, right? So one of the things I love about SV Gives is I can point to it as saying this is a different way for us to think about grant making. It's a way for us to reach out and support the entire nonprofit community and not just our individual grantees. Um, but we are pushed to be innovative. We have to be innovative, and SV Gives is a way to think about innovation and grant making in a different way. Um, finally, employee, well, not finally, employee engagement is a really important part of our work here at Microsoft. So every employee at Microsoft has $15,000 a year that they can match, use to match the individual donations of time or money. So if I saw someone from Family Giving Tree, if I donate $100 to Family Giving Tree's backpack drive in the summer, Microsoft will double my donation. Um, so that's $15,000 a year available to every employee. One of my jobs is to make sure that participation rate is as high as it can possibly be. Last year was 87% among our employees here in Silicon Valley, um, which is pretty high. And that means $3 million going out the door to all these nonprofits. It's completely non-strategic giving on my part because our, our dollars just follow where our employees invest in, where they're passionate about, where they've donated their money or time. Um, so we love this program, we're excited about it, our employees adore it, but it's completely non-strategic giving. It does go out to the entire nonprofit community. Um, so one of the things I use SV Gives for is to kind of jumpstart giving for the year. That $15,000 turns over in January, so the employee participation rate's at zero again. I need to get it up to 87% or higher by the end of the year. SV Gives last year, something like 5% of our employees gave on that one day. Uh, so that's, I use it that way. And then finally, we're corporations, we care about visibility. So whether that's partnering on social media, we'll talk about that in a minute, or getting attention for our products or our services or what we do differently, or our, our meaningful and deep partnerships with our nonprofits. Visibility is part of the equation when I'm thinking about corporate giving. So that's a quick glim glimpse at everything that sort of is in my head when I think about SV Gives from the corporate side, and now I want to kind of re-go through these items and talk to you about how you can plug into them. So how could you possibly leverage corporate support for SV Gives? If you're thinking about local giving, think about the local partnerships that you have. Think about the companies that, have, that are really deeply involved with the organization already, where you have a board member, or you have sustained volunteer opportunities, or year-over-year -year giving. That is a great opportunity to really take this, look at this local partnership and say, hey, we really value our three, four, five-year partnership with you. We'd like to make SV Give support part of it. Here's what we think we can do with a $3,000 or $5,000 matching grant. We can double that. We can get new donors. We can get you visibility. So um, think about the partnerships that you already have. Think about alignment. Alignment is really, really important. So every corporation has some kind of rubric under which they make their grant making decisions. Ours is currently USPARC. We empower youth through technology. We focus on STEM education and entrepreneurship training, coding, and digital literacy. That's what we do. That's who we tend to partner with. So being cognizant of what your, par what your local partners do and how you can align with them and then leveraging those local partnerships moving forward is one way to start. Second of all, um, if you can really make the case about needing to build your donor base or needing to build up your development program, and, and you can say, if I use, I could use SV Gives funds in these ways. I mean, the great thing about SV Gives is that these are unrestricted gifts, right? We all love unrestricted gifts. Unrestricted gifts are the best. Uh, so being able to make a case for what you need to do in your organization, being thoughtful about your next steps forward, what would you do if you, like Opportunity Fund, made $75,000 in one day last May? What could you do with that money? What could 
So making that case and being thoughtful about exactly what you can do to build your internal capacity is something else you can talk about. Um, and as I said, we're pushed to be innovative all the time. So rethinking your relationship with the nonprofits that you have and recognizing that it's really important that you do some of your same programming year over year, especially if you're focused on, say, literacy for third graders. Every year, there's a new crop of third graders who needs to learn how to read. I understand that that's year over year programming that needs to happen. But understand on the corporate side, we need to show how we're being innovative and show what we're doing differently. So kind of thinking through that tension and finding ways to talk about what you're doing uh, in a way that is, has some element of innovation or newness to it can be important. Offering, if you partner really closely, as Family Giving Tree does with us on some of our employee engagement opportunities, maybe SV gives an opportunity for you to come to campus and set up a table at lunch and talk and offer us some corporate or corporate friends some hands on deck for that day. To, if there's someone there to talk about SV Gives and talk about employee giving and the importance of it, having a nonprofit there could be a great way to sort of make that uh, table in the cafe more interesting for us. So thinking about, and I'm, and I'm going to be making all these cases to my corporate partners, as my corporate colleagues as well. But thinking about SV Gives as a way to encourage employee engagement, I think is really important. And finally, um, knowing, you know, for better or worse, that corporations do care about visibility when it comes to CSR, being a good partner there is a great way to solidify and build a relationship. Being friends on social media, tweeting and retweeting and sharing information. Share, one of my favorite pictures from SV Gives last year is actually two of our retail store employees with two Silicon Valley Community Foundation employees around an SV Gives sign. They're smiling, they're so happy, and it shows like, and they're deep, how deeply embedded our partnership is with the Community Foundation. So all of those images sharing the partnership and making that partnership visible is great, it's something we love and something um, I think can really help you build a relationship or a stronger relationship with corporations. All right, so I'm going to be talking about what makes SV Gives a really exciting event, which are the prize opportunities. So in addition to raising money uh, directly from your donors, SV Gives gives you the opportunity to get extra money, some bonuses, uh, to really amplify the donations and engagements that you're having on the day. And our prizes are organized in three categories. The first, we're calling the bonus prizes. And these are prizes that could be available throughout the entire day. Um, they are based on activity or the relationships that you already have. So for example, the leaderboard prizes are a chance for you to compete with your fellow nonprofits for some really amazing opportunities. And these leaderboards uh, will be displayed publicly, so it will give you another chance to give visibility to your organization. And also have some bragging rights saying, you know, we were number one in the most unique donors on SV Gives. How amazing is that? Um, it gives you something great to report back to your, your donors. It makes great content for social media and your e-newsletter. And then you get to hold that title for at least a year and then fight to keep it the next year. Um, the other opportunity is the matching grants. And this is a chance for you to deepen your engagement with your current donors. These can be either organization-specific grants. Uh, they could be grants available to a broad number of organizations. And it's a chance for you to give a challenge to your donor base and to the community at large to say, we have a pool of money available for us. Help us reach this goal by contributing during SV Gives. The next category are the golden tickets. And these are specific amounts of money that are awarded either sequentially or by in random increments. Um, a sequential example, last year we had the local area code prize. So a specific amount of money was awarded to the 415th and the 650th donations. Um, given our, our activity last year, those were snapped up in the wee hours in the morning. Um, so you know, keep that in mind with these sequences that they could happen at 1 a.m. or they could happen at 4 p.m. Uh, the random tickets, a little, bit, a little bit different sequence, and those are awarded based on specific criteria. Uh, this year we're proud to be continuing the tradition of the Silicon Valley Community Foundation employee golden ticket. So for every hour during the entire 24-hour events, there will be a golden ticket awarded to a random nonprofit who received a donation in that hour. Anybody could win it. A $10 donation could get a golden ticket of $150, $200, whatever amount the golden ticket is, which then amplifies that donation amount. And the final category are the power hours. And these 
These are great for social media. They're exciting. People count down the minutes until these prizes. There's some fierce submit button action happening during these hours. And these are other ways to really motivate your donors to give and to amplify their donations. Uh, we're going to be offering power hours uh, by either unique donors, so the nonprofit that has the most people, or by dollars raised, so the nonprofit that can raise the most dollars. And both of these offer different opportunities for people to, to participate in the event. It isn't just about giving money. It's about engagement, telling a story, building excitement, and getting people to check in throughout the day. And all three of these prizes offer that opportunity for you to deepen your engagement. I'll just take a minute to flash back to 2014 and just go over what happened last year. Uh, we, it was our first year doing Silicon Valley Gives, and so we were learning a lot. Um, and as part of doing Silicon Valley Gives, again, we want to share what we've learned to help you craft your strategy and have all the data possible to make smart decisions and really powerful decisions. Believe it or not, more than 500 nonprofits received at least one prize throughout the event. And these prizes were anywhere from a match based on a transaction to a golden ticket to many golden tickets to matches specific to their organizations. But the only way that you can at least win one of these prizes is to register and sign up. So you're already on the good track for that. Um, most of our prizes last year were for specific organizations. We did have quite a few prizes, such as our leaderboards and some of the golden tickets that were open to everybody. But the organizations that tended to have the most success had at least one specific matching prize for them. So that's already a way of boosting your chances of having an overall success. And finally, we learned a lot about the differences in prize structures and donor behavior, that it wasn't necessarily about the number of dollars you raised, but sometimes the number of donors you had participating could significantly increase your chances. And this goes back to how prizes are structured, how you work with your donors to create a strategy to get them to participate throughout the entire day rather than a specific hour or during waking hours, um, and really understanding your donor behavior so that way you can maximize your results. And if you haven't already, I strongly encourage you to check out our report that goes over uh, 2014 in detail. There's some fantastic data in the back that will really help you think about what is the best strategy for your organization, as well as give you a preview of what could be uh, for this year. And just while we're talking about thinking about strategy and future, I wanted to show you what the homepage will look like on the day of the event, because this will offer some great opportunities to highlight your organization if you're having successful results. Um, as this shows, we will have a wonderful countdown clock on the front of your homepage. And you can encourage your donors to check in at any time during the event. Um, we will also be featuring the total dollars raised across the entire event. This is great for social media. Um, donors love seeing your success. So you can tweet homepage shots. You can have pictures of your staff in front of the computer, refreshing. There are all these great opportunities to really deepen the engagement and build excitement. Uh, the homepage will also feature the leaderboards and golden ticket results. So if your organization is fortunate enough to be featured in the top of the leaderboard or win a golden ticket, there'll be another way for people to see your see your activity, and hopefully continue to give. And now I'm going to pass it over to Gwyneth, who is going to go over some of the strategies and ways you can build your action plan for the day of. So yeah, so I think, you know, just to kind of um, finish on what Sabrina was saying, we have handouts in the back. There's a, a matrix. There's kind of a, an overview of a deeper dive on kind of what everything means and what these prizes really are. Um, I would encourage you to look at the matrix and read the text together. They make a lot of sense. Separately, it might be a little confusing. Um, if you take a look at the matrix and you say, wow, this looks a lot more complicated than last year, it's actually not. It's, it's fairly similar to last year with a few nuances. What we wanted to do this year was to really make things clear so that when we, SVCF, are working to engage sponsors and corporate sponsors, that we have something very clear to say, this is a snapshot of opportunities. These are some examples of ways in which you might be able to support the day and hopefully give you some language and tools to be able to articulate to your donors what this is. 
Last year, we didn't know exactly. We were learning as we were going and evolving. This year, we, we learned some lessons and hopefully are getting better at it. Um, and we want to make you better at it as well this year. So um, use the tools, ask questions. By all means, we'll, we'll clarify as we, we move forward. But that's, that's there for your, your resources. The, the area in which you should pay most attention to is kind of the matching grant. That is really the piece that you guys own and control. Um, you guys are the ones that are out there really trying to, to solicit matching grants, working with us to make sure we get it up on your page and so forth. But that's, that's really what you own. The other categories are ways in which we're trying to engage donors to support the day. So let's think through a little bit about how we kind of engage individual donors and what that looks like, maybe some sample activation plans for the day itself, who you're going to engage, when you're going to target them. I think that's really important. We've got kind of a, it seems like a long time between now and May 5th, but I think it's going to really kind of speed up here soon. Um, Easter's right around the corner, and before you know it, it's going to be Cinco de Mayo, which is very exciting. Um, and, and how you're going to do it. So are you going to do it kind of traditional methods? Are you going to use social media? Are you going to use your board of directors, um, staff, volunteers, all of the different resources? So here's kind of a sample activation plan. All of, this, all of these materials are going to be up on the website and available for you, of course. But kind of the, the first things that you should be thinking about out of the gates um, is your board members, those that are really you know key. So I was talking to... Um, I think it was Bryn at Opportunity Fund. I said, what made, what made last year so successful for you? And, um, and she said, well, we had this matching grant. And it was really great. And I had a donor that came to me and said, so you have to match this in order to, to get the whole 25000 And she said, yeah, that's kind of how it goes. And the donor said, OK, well, then I'll match it. Um, great to have that kind of donor. Um, but you know, we all have those donors are out there. They are um, abundant in this area, and and so leveraging your board members to really kind of ante up, put up a match, use this day to leverage new dollars is important. So your first call should be really engaging them. So if you haven't engaged your board yet, maybe you were focused on getting the registration page up and running. This should be really your your first kind of go to. From there, think through kind of your general mailing list. This is your kind of whole network of who's in your, your ethers. Um, and let them know that SV Gives is happening. Let them know that you're registered, that you're a part of it. Um, make it easy for them to go to your page and view it. Um, but get it out there via email so that people can start to think about it, mark their calendars, and associate you with that day. They're going to be getting multiple of these from all the different nonprofits they support. You want to make sure you stay top of mind. Thinking through kind of any volunteers as well. So if you've got a volunteer group that you're engaging, um, depending on the type of organization you are, this might be a very large network or a small network. But volunteers can be great ambassadors. They might not be the biggest givers on the day, although some could be. Um, but they're great ambassadors and those that are going to help spread the word and really kind of broaden the circle for you. I think something to really remember about SV Gives and kind of the essence of it is it's not just a day to get all of your donors that give to you anyways to give a little bit more or to leverage money on that day. But this is really an opportunity to identify new, unique donors for your organization, to have people that had never even heard about you say, wow, I just learned about Opportunity Fund. I'm sorry I'm picking on you. You just happen to be in the front row. Um, that's what happens. Um, and uh, so, so really think about ways in which you can broaden your network. And so going to board members is great, but that's really just the first step. So thinking through kind of when you, you, you hit these. Again, thinking in April, you're going to want to kind of get another message out there. April's really just right around the corner, and it's going to be May before you know it, and you want to stay top of mind with your donors. So get something else out via uh, your newsletter if you have something, talking about the day, talking about if there's a specific program you want to support. Um, but again, generating excitement and awareness. Um, Hopefully, if you participated last year, those of you that did, you received a list of donors that supported last year, you want to go back to them. Make sure that they continue to come back and it wasn't just a one-off. The whole idea is to capture new donors and then sustain them as well and steward them. And so you want to go back to that list and make sure that they're engaged and they're giving to you again on this day and hopefully telling their friends to give. Um, and so make it a little bit more personal. These were maybe new people or just the folks that gave in general. Ask them to spread the message to their networks. Ask them to really have some action items so that it's not just 
give on this day, here's this link, but be personal about it. Take a little extra time. Again, the more time you put into SV Gives, the more you're going to get out of it. If you just hope you send out an email and that magically everyone's going to go on the day and give, we can all hope that. Um, but there's a lot of great organizations in the area doing really incredible work. And so it's important to stay top of mind and get your message out there. May 2nd, again, make sure people know everyone's going to be thinking about May 5th. Everyone's going to be thinking about the day of giving and SV Gives. But you want to remind them as often as possible close to the day so that they remember when they're going on there, they can pre-schedule donations, they can set it up to pre-schedule for your organization. Um, and so make sure you're, you're reaching out to them right before the day as well to remind them to give. So something else to consider, um, this is for the day of. Again, it's May 5th. We can have some fun this year. Cinco de Mayo parties, um, some sort of activity, a luncheon at the office, um, something in the community, a playground, whatever it is that your organization is committed to and engaged in, I think this is the day to, to have a celebration, get people excited about giving, um, make them feel like they want to be a part of something and a part of your organization. And so I think it's just an opportunity to do something a little bit special. It doesn't need to be a big fancy gala or anything like that, but just a day of activity. Yes, in the back. Uh, they will be shortly following this presentation, as well the presentation is being videoed. So we will, everything will be online. You'll have all of this as a kind of sample schedule. Follow it exactly. Follow pieces of it, whatever you think is best. You know your donors best. This is just kind of a guideline as far as some recommendations. Okay. Um, so again, day of, think about your next gen donors. So they are alive and well in Silicon Valley, I promise you, and they are up in the wee hours of the morning. So think about how you're going to get people excited at midnight. This is when things start, the leaderboard kicks off, you want to be top of mind, you want to be there and be present. I will be up at 12 a.m. I imagine many of you will as well. Um, but this is an exciting time, and particularly for the younger donors, that next generation that's going to be supporting your organization, hopefully now, but also in the future. These are the folks that you want to get out there. So think about social media and think about all the different outlets that you have. So you've used maybe e-newsletters or e-blasts for your traditional donors. Um, this is an opportunity to really utilize social media, and hopefully you guys attended some of the trainings. But think about a Facebook post at midnight. Get them kicked off. Get them excited about it. Again, in the early morning hours, think about kind of your general audience that's getting ready to go to work. Right before they get to work, maybe they want to do their donation. When they get to their desk, they want to do it. Think about kind of the timing of when you send these out, so make it strategic. So maybe a 6 a.m. kind of email blast reminding them to give. 8 a.m., make sure you get something to your board members. Board members tend to be board members of various different organizations involved in all different types of things and are very busy. So make it easy for them. Send them a template to send out to their networks immediately. Say, here is some sample language. We would love if you could push this out to your networks, colleagues, friends, whatever it might be. Um, make it easy for them. Do it right in the morning so they can do it as soon as they get to their desk. Boom, it goes out. And hopefully that will generate some awareness for the day. Again, 9 a.m., the day would have been going on for a while at this juncture. Hopefully there will be exciting stats to report and some news. Use Twitter. Think about thanking donors that might have given already, if there's a key match or a sponsor that you might have. Um, give some updates on progress. People want to be a part of some momentum, and they want to feel like something's happened. Um, and so I think if you can do that, that will, will generate some excitement. And noon, again, have a lunch event. Have something that's some sort of activity that's celebrating this great day of giving, um, celebrating your success. Don't be afraid to ask people to give. This is what the day is all about. you got to be able to ask um, in order to have success here. So again, these are just some recommendations. You don't have to follow it exactly, but hopefully it's a guide that will be helpful. I'm going to turn it back to Sabrina. She's going to talk a little bit about case studies that happened last year. There was a lot of feedback from several different people around a particular issues. We've worked to address those this year. Um, we've limited golden tickets, so organizations cannot win any more than three golden tickets this year, so there is a cap. 
Um, and so Sabrina is going to talk through a few case studies, what happened last year, some areas of opportunity, and, and why people had some success. All right, so this, this is the part that makes me excited. Um, I had the opportunity to review all of the data from last year. I spent weeks and months combing through it, looking for stories, and there were some amazing stories that came out of the event. Um, and this organization was one of them. Uh, this is the Machine Intelligence Research Institute, otherwise known as MIRI. And to quote their mission statement, MIRI exists to ensure that the creation of smarter than human intelligence has a positive impact. So already, this organization has a built-in advantage. They work with artificial intelligence and machine learning. They are data people. This event is built for data people. Um, and I had not heard of this organization until SV Gives. So you can consider me one of those people who was able to discover a new organization that I'm now a little obsessed with because I am a data person. Um, and Miri had what we would say is phenomenal success on the day of the event. They were on the large nonprofit leaderboard, with, which was nonprofits with a budget of two million or over. They were number two for number of unique donors. Um, they raised over $110,000 just from donors, not including the over $50,000 that they secured in prizes. And this organization did this with some very specific strategies. The first is that they picked a specific prize to focus on. They didn't try to do everything. They were very focused and very set on one specific prize that for what would be seemingly a small amount of a donation could have a maximum return. Um, and in this case, it was the golden tickets. They realized that a $10 donation and a $100 donation are actually the same when competing for a $2,000 golden ticket. It was all about being in the right place at the right time for the algorithm. The second, second component that led to Mary's success is that they played to their donor base. Their donor base are computer people. They're globally based. And they were able to, uh, Miri was able to organize their donors well in advance. Um, they actually put out a call on social media, on their email blast, everywhere saying, we are participating in SV Gives. We want to organize and make sure we are playing this to the best of our strategy. Uh, they had their international donors uh, give their donations during locally the wee hours of our morning, which was, you know, bright and sunny midday in, in Europe or Asia. Um, and so they were able to have a global strategy to make sure that they were receiving donations constantly throughout the day. Um, they also made sure that any major donors, so donors that were able to give $100 or more US, were giving during specific times. So this is an example of an organization that knows their donors, crafted their strategy to play to the strengths, and um, also use social media to really engage people. It wasn't just give. Here's how to give. They were, there was a, a specific call to action. And they um, also published how they did it. Uh, this, I encourage you to go read this blog post. They actually shared it before the event and during the event. They outline everything there for you. It's open source. It really plays into the organization's mission of using all this you know, iterative intelligence to help people do better in the world and to use data to do better in the world. Question. So are you telling me they did not have robots giving? They were all humans giving? They were all humans giving. Okay, just yeah. <laughs> um, capped at three. So you know, this is one of the places where we learned that in order to give everyone a fair shot to win these amazing prizes, we do need to put some restrictions in place. So these were all humans. This was a human organized event. And, um, you know, but again, use data. Data is not the enemy. Data can be your friend. And this will help your organization be stronger in your fundraising and in your operations. If you're able to take your information from last year, look at it, download the, uh, the 2014 report, compare your results to that, and really see where you could strengthen your fundraising giving. See, I saw a question over here. No? All right, our next organization is a little different. It is the Breast Cancer Emergency Fund. And this organization, um, 
Breast Cancer Emergency Fund provides quick and compassionate short-term emergency financial assistance to low-income breast cancer patients and their family. So already we have an organization with a different mission. This organization was on the small nonprofit leaderboard, so we're talking about a different budget, different size, different donor base. Um, they were able to raise quite a bit through their donors. Uh, they had an organization-specific match, so already you know, leveraging their existing donor base to increase their chances for prizes. And this organization was able to secure um, a match from one of the employers participating in Silicon Valley Gifts. So they were able to capture another uh, segment of corporate support. Uh, before the event, BCEF did a lot with social media. They were tweeting and sharing on Facebook all of their attendance at training sessions. There were training session selfies, so maybe we'll see some more selfies after this event. Um, and they were really using a variety of media. It wasn't just photos, it was text, there were videos, they have amazing donor stories and amazing constituent stories. They were sharing those on social media to remind people why their organization is, is amazing. Um, and they also were fortunate enough to be featured in a Razu blog post. Razu is the, the platform that we're using for SV Gives. And Razu does feature nonprofits who are registered uh, through their service. So they all, you know, BCEF had another way of promoting themselves. Uh, they also had an added bonus that their annual pink party, which is a happy hour fundraiser, coincidentally was on May 6th. So they had people in a room already invested in the organization, and all they had to do was really put out a table and say, hey, here's another chance for you to really amplify your giving. Um, this provided them with a lot of content for the day of event. They're able to build up to it, say, here's us setting up, here's the event, thank you for your donations. And they were able to share additional stories because they had this amazing event going on. Uh, there were some other events that were held through the day. Um, some donors had a lunchtime reception to encourage people to give specifically to this organization. Could be yours. Um, maybe you want to band together with a couple of, of similar organizations that you work with and maybe the collectively have a registration table or an information table to really motivate people to give. So the key takeaways are to share your experience. SV Gives isn't just about the day of, it's about everything leading up to it and what you do afterwards. You're, you're doing this to become a better organization, so share that with your donors. They would love to hear that. They want to hear about you growing. Um, don't just do tweets. Don't just do Facebook, you gotta do everything because different people read different types of content. Different donors respond to different content. For example, if you're trying to reach my mom, you gotta send her an email. Whereas if you're trying to reach me, I'll, you need to hit me all these different ways because I don't know what I'm gonna be looking at at that particular moment. Um, and using the day to really create a unique experience for your donors, it doesn't have to be a big gala. It could just be an information table. It could be a come by and get a free temporary tattoo. It could be a, hey, you know, let's read a story for an hour together and then maybe you give. It just something meaningful that fits with your organization's mission. Um, and I just want to share, this is the organization planning for the event. They have the full prize matrix up there. And they, this was shared on their Twitter feed. The third organization is the National Center for Equine Facilitated Therapy. And um, this organization uses the human-horse relationship to offer in, you know, innovative therapy techniques. Um, again, this organization was on the small nonprofit leaderboard. And not only did they have a fantastic success raising dollars from their donors, they had five donors give them organization-specific matches. So here's an organization that was really leveraging deep connections with their donors to significantly increase their chances. Um, and also essentially give them guaranteed prizes or a higher guarantee. Uh, this photo in particular, one of my colleagues was excited that we were using it because it really stuck out in her mind from last year. There was a lot of social media going on and we want to see more social media. But that's a lot of noise. And so in order for your organization to stand out and really remind people why they want to give, you have to have memorable moments. And this photo is one example that they did a countdown with their horses. And even a year later, it stuck with someone who saw thousands and thousands of tweets and Facebook posts and e-blasts. Um, and that says a lot about the power of a strong image. Uh, they also had in-person registration tables before the event and during the event. Uh, they partnered with other stables 
to have information tables to remind people that Silicon Valley, Valley Gives is coming. You should support us. You can support other organizations, but mostly us. Um, and on the day of, we're stationed all over the community where they're based to get people to give. And they brought photos. Um, they you know, had a big table with their sign. It was pretty hard to miss. And they did share that on social media, so that way people knew that if they wanted to give in person, here was somewhere to do it. And they were also to engage with people in their, not just their donors, but the people that they were supporting, their constituents, to show this is what we're doing for you. Uh, another added bonus is that they incorporated SV Gives into their overall fundraising plan. So it was posted on their events page as something that's happening to let their donors know. It was up there with the galas, with the regular fundraising events. And they really made it part of their overall strategy and made sure to time their communications accordingly. Oh. I will now open it up. If there are any questions? Yes. Yeah, did you say how much the last um, approximately, I would say they each, uh, the Na National Center raised over 30,000, give or take. Um, BCEF raised, again, also over 30,000. So, you know, not, not an insignificant amount. We're about two and a half months away. There's a few gifts up there already. At what point, is it 15 days out, three weeks out, at what point are the majority of the prizes posted? I believe we should have everything three weeks out uh, will be the, the final point. We do have to close it off at uh, that point so we, Razu can set up the system, make sure the algorithms are, are posted correctly. Um, so if you're really trying to, to you know, strategize with your prizes, that's when the final list will be made. However, it's not too early to start thinking about what your overall strategy could be. Um, the prizes are a way to amplify your dollars, but you still need to get those donations in. So you can, right now, start thinking about how you want to organize your donors so that when the final prize list is ready, you can then use that to, to really build upon it. So there is a cutoff date for gifts, I'm sorry. Yes. Three, week, three yes. weeks out is the Yes. Cutoff. So if you're working with a, a donor to have an organization-specific matching grant, you should reach out to them now and also make sure to contact svgives at siliconvalleycf.org um, because we will then work with you and your donor to make sure the prize is, is structured um, to the best that it can be and that it's listed and um, some other details that we can help you with. That's a, that's a really important point. I think that um, if you have a donor that says, we want to give you $10,000, $25,000, whatever the matching grant might be, contact us because we need to work with Razu, make sure it's properly loaded on your page, make sure we've got tr keeping track of it and so forth, because we want to make sure that it's eligible on that day. So please be sure to contact us for gifts, for sure. Yeah, I have a related because uh, my understanding, kind of back end of it, is that donors actually give to SVCF and then that is then a matching gift to our organization. Um, we're soliciting a major donor uh, for a matching grant who wants to do it just out of their donor advised fund to us. Is that possible to talk to you guys? Is the donor advised fund held with us yeah. or elsewhere? Can I repeat elsewhere. that question? If, if the, they have a major donor that has a donor advised fund at a organization, they'd like to make a grant from their donor advised fund to this particular nonprofit. Um, and so she's wanting to know how that would work. So Lakshmi, in that case, would it, it would go from the donor advised fund? From the donor advised fund to SVPF yeah. with a memo line stating their organization. Yeah. But they could do it out of, I mean, an external donor advised fund. Yeah, absolutely. And also, if any of your donors have, that's a very important point. Um, you might not be aware if your donors are making grants out of donor advised funds or not. But anytime they make a gift to you, it'll have to say that it comes from a donor advised fund of a particular organization. If it's through SVCF and they happen to have a fund with us, it's a very easy just transfer. Um, and so we can make that process very simple for them. So if you do have those donors, um, you know, engage them, they can then issue the, the IFT for us and, and we can process that very quickly. 
Other questions? I think there's some over on this side. Yes? Yeah, um, for the matching gift, uh, does 100% of the matching gift go to the nonprofit or does Razu take out its percent? No, 100% of the matching gift goes to the nonprofit. What about for the scheduled donations? How's that going to work um, as far as playing into the prizes? Sure. So the scheduled donations, um, they count towards leaderboard prizes and your overall donation activity. They do not, however, count towards um, the power, the, any of the hourly prizes because the scheduled donations are processed in a specific order. Um, essentially, Razu queues them up and processes them. So keep that in mind that if people are pre-scheduling donations, you may not be able to use those donations towards all the prizes. Um, but it's still another way to get donors to give. And I know a lot of people may be busy during the day, they may be traveling, and scheduling a donation is a great way to encourage people that, and remind people that they can still participate even if they're not physically able to give on that day. So if you have a scheduled donation, I know that um, Razu processes some of those in kind of the wee hours, like the 2, mm -hmm. 3, 4 a.m. That could still theoretically hit a golden ticket, right? Or no? Uh, no, I don't no. believe so. Okay. No. Because because they can't capture when they're going through. I mean, they batch them so okay. irregularly. Um, so nothing that's going to be hourly oriented, the pre-scheduled donations will not count for anything hourly. If it's cumulative throughout the entire day, so most unique donors, most dollars raised throughout the entire day, absolutely pre-scheduled donations mm -hmm. will count for that. Yes. So yeah, so what will happen is we'll have people that, you know, if we are working with a particular company that says I'd like to make a ticket available for the 500th and 50, whatever it might be, we'll, on the prize page of the website, we'll publish all of the details of all the prizes that we are aware of that we've worked to help solicit. Not the time, um, just the number. Like just the number, exactly. Out of the exactly. Out of okay. No, 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 exactly. If we can find our own matching donations, are we free to use all those types of price structures? We can say during a specific time frame, uh, a random donation during this time will be matched, something like that. Can we use those structures for our own private donations, or does it just have to be during this 24 hour period? Uh, what do you mean for your own private so donations? So let's say we're able to get somebody that said, well, I'll give you for the first eight hours, match X dollars, for the next six, eight hours, I'll match Y dollars. So you have an incentive to try to get people to donate throughout the day, right. rather than just one 24 hour thing. Or if you want to say, this donor wants to give a, a $5,000 golden ticket, any donation made during the lunch hours to my organization. Right. Can we structure it that way, or are there limits on how we can structure our belt negotiating matches? Yeah, there are some limits, and, and the limits are set by Razu's platform. It's not SVCF saying, no, you can't do this. Um, so there's some limitations, but we can work with you to understand them. Lux, it looks like you want to talk. Matching bags are generally 24 hours, 12 to 24 hours. They get set at least, like, we have a cap to have it given to us by three, three days before the event, so we start working to set it up. So it goes on at 12, you know, midnight. And if you get exhausted any time, but then it's available and open throughout the event. So, yeah, so, I mean, it's happy to kind of strategize and think through if you've got donors that are looking at specific things, if it's possible or not. So that's, if there's, if you have questions, you've got a donor that says, we really want to do this unique thing, and you're not sure whether or not it's possible, contact us immediately and, um, and we'll let you know yes, no, maybe. And uh, we absolutely want to try to make it work as best as possible. And if the system won't allow it, we'll let you know that too in advance. Which is part of the reason why yeah. that the um, prize, that we have a matrix for the prize structure, right? Yeah. The, on our side, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for sponsors to plug in and find the right way for a sponsor to jump on board and be part of this day. So by offering all those different options for sponsors, yes, it makes things slightly more complicated on the other end, but the idea is getting more sponsors on board. Exactly. Oh, and also the other, the sort of complicated competitive gamification aspect of it, that's also part of our strategy on our end to really reach out to 
the engineering mindset in the Valley. They love gamification, they love badges, they love competition, they love figuring things out. Um, and we want all the, I want every engineer in the Valley to become a donor of mm -hmm. some, to someone, of something that matters to them. So the, again, the little bits of complication and the gamification and the strategy, super appealing to a pool of donors that is not giving it the capacity they could be. We'd love to lift them all up together, right, and make them all Absolutely. major donors. Absolutely. Yes, sorry, this is mentioned before, I just want to clarify, pre-scheduled donations are eligible for golden tickets? They are not eligible for anything that is hourly related, but anything that is throughout the entire day, they will be. So if it's within a particular hour, or there's some time limitation to that, they will not be eligible, and that's just because the way that Razu batches them, they don't. If every, otherwise, everything would hit at midnight, and it would kind of crash right. things. So they they batch them throughout time. Thanks. Sure. Yes. And individual matching grants, 100 uh, percent goes to the organization, regardless of whether it's actually matched or not. Uh, that's something that you can work out with your donor. Right. Yeah, so that would be the donor's decision. But not SVG. No, and we're not going to, it would be us saying, oh, no, we're going to hold this back. Um, it's really an incentive for you to, to get more donors, and it's up to the donor whether they say, well, you didn't hit the match, so therefore you're not going to get it all. But one would hope that would be the case. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, last year there were some delays um, for donations that were made right close to midnight that were processed for a couple hours. Is that somehow being... Do you mean the pre-scheduled donations or people that went on and actually donated? I actually don't think that was the case. There was um, people that actually had pre-scheduled donations. Well, if I could, I donated at, according to my clock, and hit donate at 12.02, but my receipt came back dated 2 a.m. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So that happened. Yeah. I don't believe I was the only one. Okay, that's uh, we can look into that with Razu. Um, but, uh, I, I know that last year it was counting on the East Coast time zone oh. because Razu is based in the East yeah, Coast. That will not be. But the I, believe, yeah, I believe that they, <laughs> they announced that they would be doing it this week. Yes. Oh. And I will, I will say one more thing about. Could I hear that? What did she say? I'm sorry. Could you repeat what you said? Sure. So she had, she said that she thought that. Last year, that there was donations made at the midnight hour um, that didn't count until a couple hours later, and so the the answer was that Razu last year was operating at times on the East Coast time, which was accounted for some of the delay. Uh, that will not be the case this year. So, yeah, and again, our our intentions were are to not have these kind of hourly situations that are capped or any pre-scheduled donations that are. So we've really tried to kind of address some of the issues because there was some challenges in that midnight hour. There was a lot of excitement, a lot of activity, um, a lot of things got exhausted, and so we're trying to make the, the structure easier this year. Right, and I, one more thing about midnight while we're talking about it. Um, I, the Community Foundation itself put up $50,000 at midnight to yeah. get people on board and donating to kick off the day, and then it was a two-to-one match at midnight. Super exciting, right? Um, yes. <laughs> Except it went I, like my that. understanding, I don't think another giving day has had a fifty thousand dollar match in an hour. It was fairly unprecedented. Um, it was exhausted in under a minute. It was exhausted something like thirty eight seconds. So it was so exciting that many, 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 many people got on board. So there was, there was, I know there was concern also about, you know, was my clock right? Did this look right? right? One aspect of the issues in midnight were simply that so many people got on board that those matching funds were just gone. Yeah. So Again, also not the worst problem to have. So right. The donors <laughs> on board and excited, but yeah. unintended consequences in some ways. Yeah. Um, another exciting thing is that Silicon Valley Community Foundation will be doing another fifty thousand dollar match. We have um, authorized that, and so we're going to put that up. We will not be doing it in the first hour to <laughs> have it exhausted in thirty <laughs> seconds. Um, but more information to come. But that will be available, and we, um, as an organization are really committed to this day and trying to make it as successful for the region as possible. Um, we're actively fundraising and, and trying to identify sponsors throughout the region, companies, individuals. We're working with our donors to get them excited about the nonprofits in this room and beyond. Um, so we're really committed to it. Any other questions? Yes. So one more. Um, your definition of unique donor so if I donate to three different organizations that day, only my first one 
Am I a unique donor? You're a unique donor to each organization. I am. Yes. If you donate twice to the same organization, you're no longer a unique right. donor for that organization. Okay. Okay. Exactly. That's exactly right. So if we secure a, a prize or a matching gift for our organization specifically, could you just talk us real quick through how we get that information to SBCF? Sure. So you want to email, do we have our email on the next, oh yeah. Email svgives at siliconvalleycf.org. Um, that will go immediately into our team kind of email box will then contact you immediately. There's some information we'll need. Lakshmi will work with you step by step to get it uploaded onto your page. There's Lakshmi in the back. Um, and once that gets uploaded, we can publicize it on, on the prize and match page. Um, and then you can start publicizing it via social media and so forth. Am I missing a step, Lakshmi? We basically ask you to uh, help your daughter fill an intake form. That's the first step. Uh, and then we will work uh, to get it on our price page as soon as we get the check from your donor. Where's but the intake, form? Uh, the intake form will be up online after this uh, session. But uh, if you email svgives at siliconvalleycf.org, that would be the best way. Uh, we prefer that you email us so that we can make sure and track and make Razu put it up on time. So. Um, you know, so the best way to reach out to us is svgives at siliconvalleycf.org. Um, and uh, also there are gift transfer instructions that go with the form, so which, you know, which we would like to give you ourselves. So uh, please do reach out to the email address, uh, and we have a less than 24 hours response system, so uh, we will get back to you ASAP. And, and be mindful when you're soliciting some of these matching grants, um, again, the Day of Giving, SV Gives, is supposed to be really exciting, public, lots of social media. Not every donor is public and wants to be blasted out as offering matching gifts. So be sure when you engage with that individual or company, be clear, can I use your name? Would you like to be anonymous? What information can be shared? Um, because I just, I think that's really important. Last thing you want to do is get this great matching gift opportunity, push it out into the ether, and donor says, wait a minute, I didn't want that to go out there, and they retract the gift. So um, so just be mindful and thoughtful about how you're asking and engaging. Yes, in the back. Um, if somebody wants to donate to my organization and their company does employee match programs, is it possible for them to schedule their donation, have their company schedule the match, if the company's willing to do that? Yeah, just could probably speak um, to that more. So. Maybe. <laughs> uh, the complicated thing, and this is something that you know, I'm working, about, uh, working with on my end, is that every company handles matching differently. Everyone has different guidelines. There are about six or seven portals out there that com different companies use. So it's, it's fairly complicated. There, I wish that we could say, do step one, step two, you're done. Um, and that's just not the case. It depends on the company and, the, um, and their relationship with SVCF and exactly. how all that's set up. Yeah, so possibly, um, again, contact us if we can help navigate that or let you know if we've worked with that company and their employee matching gift program in the past, that might be helpful information to you. Um, so again, communicate with us early and often so that we can help you be as successful as possible. I will say, actually, yeah, and I will say while there are development people in the room to make sure that you pull all that donor information off of Razu and you have that at hand because mm -hmm. at least for our matching gifts, we have to contact the nonprofit directly and say, hey, did Jessica give you this $100? Um, so make sure you have that information for yourself to be able to do that verification. Yep. Yes? Um, so this is our first time, and I don't understand. You said that Silicon Valley Community Foundation will have a, another $50,000 match. Mm -hmm. How does that work? I mean, is it spread out to everybody, or how does it go? We haven't determined exactly how to use it. So last year, we set it up at midnight. We were super excited. We wanted to generate excitement, and it did, except it went in 30 seconds. Um, you know, great problem to have. We just didn't anticipate that. Um, and so this year, we're trying to be a little bit more thoughtful about how to use that $50,000. Uh, it's not going to go to one particular organization. It will be spread across. We just need to think through how to do that and when the best time to do that is. It'll all be announced. It'll be on the prize page and, and so forth. But um, yes, uh, 
That's, does that answer your question at least a little bit? <laughs> Last year, I think there were four or five different hourly matches where, say, the Hewlett Foundation said every gift, the first $50,000 that comes in the door at 6 p.m. will match that. So sort of an NPR-style hourly match, that's what we're talking about here. you joking. There's not any other question. Oh, one last question. Um, what is the percentage, like, I know on Giving Tuesday, they also had a higher, I thought, a higher percentage of what they were going to take out of the donation? Mm -hmm. So. The, the, and the total fee that Razoo assesses um, and the credit card transaction fees is 5.9% plus 30 cents per credit card transaction. We are working with eBay, which is very exciting, where eBay, if you make your, if your donors make your transaction through eBay, or um, through PayPal, on that site, sorry, eBay and PayPal are associated in my bed. Um, if you go through PayPal on that day, um, they will then donate a percentage back to that organization, so essentially lowering that a bit, um, up to $100,000. PayPal. Pardon? PayPal. Uh, um, but, but getting back to the fees, it's five, Razoo's 5.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. That's on the day itself. We were able to negotiate them down. Their fees were 6.9%. Um, so we were able to bring them down a percentage. And I, while we're talking about fees, I will say two things about that. And if that's, if this is the first you've heard of the 5.9%, um, A, the credit card transaction fees are included in that, which yes. are substantial, particularly if we're talking about Amex. Uh, B, since you're in the room, you get to know, I mean, this is the, literally Razu's only source of income, uh, revenue stream for them. So, and they are not, they are doing okay as a company. They're not, this is not a massive source of, um, wealth generation for the company. Right. Uh, they processed 20,000 transactions for us in a day, which is no joke last year. Right. Uh, it's a very robust platform. It didn't go down once. Yes. It takes a lot of work on their end. I will say one thing they've added this year, which is something to definitely include in your communications with your donors, is an option that when you're, when you're making the donation, a little screen will pop up will say, hey, do you want to pay for the fees for this transaction? So if you're make, you have a donor making a $100 do, uh, donation, it will say, hey, do you want to pay an extra $5.90? And then the nonprofit gets the full $100. So that's going to be something that's pushed at your donors, something to, that you should really encourage them to take advantage of. Um, and currently, I think they have about a 25% usage rate on that, which is great, which again, like then you get the full, you get the full donation. So exactly. just yeah. FYI on that. Very important. And just the last bit, just... Just to clarify, Silicon Valley Community Foundation does not assess any fees, so these fees are not ours. We've actually taken it on our own to raise money to cover our operating costs, so there are not additional fees from the Community Foundation. Lisa, did you have anything clarifying? The donation booster. Yeah. Thank you. Use that donation booster. Perfect. Yeah, it's a great tool, so definitely encourage the donation booster that Jessica just mentioned. It's definitely a great tool. Um, when donors are going on board, so. And yet, yes. When I was, with the, just for your information, like Giving Tuesday, when they when that popped up, I thought they were saying that automatically came out, so I said, I'll just give it to the donation myself, to the organization, instead of sending it to Razoo, because it wasn't like it was generating any more income by going through Razoo. I'm not, I'm sorry. So not. Well, if I donate directly to the organization, I didn't have that overhead. Right. You will, I mean, you will have some of it if you donate by a credit card. Right. Yeah, that overhead is, exists. Yeah. Right. There's always at least about a two and a half, three, maybe higher percent right. fee on any credit card donation that's made. So this is not a unique situation. Oh, I, I understand and also the fact, and the, the reality is if you're sending, even if someone sends you a huge check to your organization, great, huge check, that's awesome. Um, someone is processing, handling that process. So that's an invisible fee on that, on that. Mm -hmm issue as well. Yeah. So overhead is a reality a that we all kind of live with. So, and again, it's a, it's, it's a unique day and, and, and the intention is to generate new unique donors. Um, and so hopefully that's something that you can accomplish. If there's questions um, that pop up when you leave this room and think, oh, I should have asked this, or I've, I'm approaching a major donor next week, and I'm not sure the best strategy would love some advice or feedback. We are here to be a resource to you and help you be the best fundraisers you can be. Um, so let us help you. That's what we do. 
Um, reach out early and often to us, please. Make it personal to your donors. Reach out early and often to them as well. And encourage competition. The Valley is a unique place. I came from the East Coast. It is very different out here, I promise you. Um, competition alive and well. No, next gen, younger, innovative donors are alive and well. So think about how to capture them while you're here. Any other questions? Thank you so much for coming. There's additional training sessions coming up. I hope you will continue to attend them. Visit the website. All of this information will be available to you. And uh, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.